This video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. 66 years of expertise built into every tool. All right, guys, we're looking at a 10-ton train split system. One of the things I do like uh, about having a set of smart probes now is I can take this door off, hook them up, and then put the door back on. Even though there may be, I could go through one of these holes with my hoses, but this will be a lot easier than having to fight hoses. Basically, we got here, it's 90 degrees in the building. It's a pizza joint, and uh, they used to be corporate, controlled by the corporation. So corporate had control over the thermostat. Thermostat was locked out and said that corporate needed to enter a code. Manager of the store said they're no longer corporate, they're franchised now. So she told me to get rid of that thermostat and do whatever I had to do to make this unit cool. So I took that thermostat off the wall that corporate used to control, jumped out my functions with a jumper, and you can see we're running. We're pulling good heat, but I'm gonna verify that the charge is good. We're working with 410. So I'm gonna put the smart probes on there and uh, put the door back on because you, you can't leave this door off while you're checking charge because it's open, there's no coil back here. It's not like a root or a ring. And uh, I forgot my camera at home, so I'm filming with my phone, so I'll have to just take some screenshots on the Tesco app and show y'all what the charge looks like. All right, guys, as you just saw from the screenshot, uh, I'm on circuit B. You know, we have two five-ton circuits. You got one line set here and one line set here. This is a 10-ton machine with two five-ton circuits. This is circuit B. I got my pipe clamps on the outside, but of course my pressure probes are in here and my door's on. So we're getting a true reading. Uh, we're a little low on gas. We don't have any subcooling and our superheat's just a little too high. So I'm gonna go grab a a uh, swivel T or a core tool or something so where I can add gas to this thing. I'll have to add a little bit of gas at the time then put the door back on so I can get a true reading. But we're going to add gas to circuit B uh, to bring up the subcooling and lower that superheat a bit. All right, so I'm done charging circuit B. You see I got my door wedged up, I got my jug of 410A, and uh, this is doing just fine. It, it's acting the same way. It's not bypassing any air like that. And for those that comment about every little thing, yes, I do weigh my refrigerant. What I do is I weigh it before I start, and I write the weight down right there, and then when I get done, I'll re-weigh it, and I know how much I use. That's just less shit that I have to carry back here from the truck. Anyway, so here's my charging setup. You can see right here I have the pressure probe, a valve core tool, and then a yellow jacket ball valve, and my hose goes in the side of the core tool, and of course there's my high side. Put this back on here. Got it. And then the hose is just running right there. So as you just saw from the screenshot, we drastically lowered the superheat, but we still didn't gain any subcooling. And I'm fine with that. And the, for those of you that say, oh, you know, that's not good. It, it is good. It's just fine. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason that we don't have any subcooling is because it's over 90 degrees in that building. Okay? It's over 90 degrees, which means that that expansion valve is wide open. It's not even acting like an expansion valve right now. It, it's pretty much nothing but a big-ass piston. At 90 degrees, that son of a bitch is wide open. So it's, the, the expansion valve is not opening and closing like it normally does. It's, it's just wide open. I mean, it's pretty much nothing but a piston. And that's why we were not able to obtain any subcooling. Once it cools down in the building, the subcooling will obtain. But right now it's not going to, again, because it's nothing, it's acting like nothing but a piston right now because of the high indoor temperature. You can see now we even got sweat back on the line set. Not that I, fought, not that I do beer can colder, look at it for sweat back but if you look at 
circuit A down here. There's no sweat back. But circuit B has sweat back. So the chances are circuit A is probably in the same boat on charge as B was. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the camera down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch my probes from circuit B to circuit A. We are now hooked up to circuit A out here with the temp probes and circuit A inside. As you saw from the screenshot, circuit A is not quite as bad, but it's just about in the same boat as circuit B. So I'm gonna hit my ball valve here. Add a little gas. Shut it off. And I'm gonna do that a few times until I get things where I want it. I wish I could film it, but I don't have two cameras today. I'm just working with the phone. Uh, I hope, you know, so I'm doing what I can. I'll post another screenshot when I get the charge where I'm happy with it. All right, guys, as you saw from that screenshot, we were able to obtain subcooling out of this uh, circuit, which is great. And, uh, I think it was nine, right, like 9.9, 9, 10 degrees subcooling with 12 something on the superheat. This machine's cooling very well now. You can see that both circuits now have sweat back. Again, we're not going off of sweat back. It's just to say that when we got here, they didn't. Now they do. We had just a tad bit of gas to both circuits. So, you know, not horrible. Um, it has definitely cooled off in there. It was 90 degrees when I got here. My jumpers are still on the thermostat. So I got to go take those off and put them a thermostat that they can control that corporate can't. I'm just going to put them a Honeywell stat that I have on the truck because this system requires a two cooling, two heat. You have, not, not that it's a heat pump or anything, but you have Y1, Y2, and then W1, W2 for your heat and Y1, Y2 for your first and second stage cooling so that's what i'm going to go do now but other than that everything looks good charge is good and it's definitely cooling off in the building all right guys i'm in the truck doing my paperwork and uh i'm all done got the system cooling but just wanted to uh show you guys this thermostat i don't even know what kind it is it's got this sticker right here this is, this, this is part of a remotely monitored system. Before removing, call in-touch controls. And then if you look on the back here, I don't know what this was doing. This was just dangling. But right here, there was some wires with a black plug that plugged in. That's where the, uh, the corporate office was able to tap into this thing and uh, control it from corporate. So we just did away with all that. And we put that thermostat right there. Because that's all I had on the truck that would work. So, because uh, I needed a two heat and a two cool. So, but anyway, all right guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see y'all on the next one.